for a closer look at why this is, take a look at this chart. It shows you the relative greenhouse gas emissions by mode. And mode, we've found, is one of the most significant factors to supply chain emissions. A lot of products are sent overnight by airplane. Uh, these are perishable goods uh, that you might find in your local grocery store or, uh, or flower shop. Uh, or anything that's sent by, by overnight FedEx. Next, trucks produce about 250 grams per uh, ton kilometer, which is the measure of weight times distance. Trains are the next most efficient, then refrigerated ships, and by far the most efficient at 13.7 grams per ton kilometer is the container ship. So it's easy to understand why French wine that's shipped to the U.S can be more efficient than wine that's trucked across the US. Uh, and this is even more true for wine that's shipped from a boutique winery via overnight FedEx to the East Coast. The second most important factor after mode is the weight of the product. So looking at how much service is delivered to the final customer uh, per that weight. So, a wine bottle, you get about four glasses of wine out for one bottle. So that's four units of service to the end customer. Some products are, um, are dehydrated. Let's look at dehydrated strawberries, for example. You get a lot more servings per pound of shipped material in that way. So one, one way of reducing shipping emissions is by reducing the weight of the product. Next is distance. Sometimes you can't control this. Uh, some materials are only available in one section of the globe and uh, simply need to be shipped in. Um, and when you can't do anything different with the, uh, the shipping distance, you need to look at the mode and try to ship with a container ship if at all possible. The biggest point I want to impress on you is this. Greenhouse gas emissions and fossil fuel are synonymous. At the current price of $30 a barrel, or the past price of $140 a barrel, oil is 30 times more expensive than buying carbon emission credits for offsetting your company's emissions. So accounting for supply chain greenhouse gas emissions and working to reduce them can yield savings while avoiding the cost of emission offset credits. Some projects, such as energy efficiency improvements and clean technology projects, may even qualify for sellable credits. So a company that's actively managing its greenhouse gas emissions not only reduces cost throughout its supply chain by reducing its dependence on fossil fuels, but it also decreases the amount of carbon credits that it needs to purchase in order to uh, maintain a, a favorable image in today's green conscious consumers. In addition to the obvious cost savings, greenhouse gas management is also a matter of risk reduction. Not only the risk from future greenhouse gas legislation, but also from the volatility of fossil fuel prices. This volatility is expected to continue and high prices are going to return in the future. I assure you this. Understanding your organization's greenhouse gas emissions and the associated fossil fuel use can help you better estimate future costs and the risk exposure. Working to manage those emissions will reduce the risk exposure from price volatility. Walmart, the world's largest company, has become a champion of supply chain management. Even though they don't produce any of the items that they sell, they have a large impact on greenhouse gas emissions of their suppliers around the world. In the words of Walmart's CEO, Lee Scott, we expect from suppliers a firm commitment to meet strict social and environmental standards, to be open to rigorous audits, and to publicly disclose all appropriate information. He also added, we are confident that this effort will be good for business. Recently, Walmart held a major conference in China for many of its suppliers 
where they laid out some of their future environmental plans, including reducing those greenhouse gas emissions throughout their supply chain. With that, I would like to thank you for your kind attention and welcome any questions that you might have. Um, I prefer doing a more interactive uh, format when I give a presentation, so I've allowed plenty of time to uh, interact with you. So please send in your questions through the uh, interface on your screen. Thank you. Thanks, Pablo. Um, so if everybody has the little panel uh, up on their screen, you can um, send in your questions now. Um, you know, Pablo, one of the first questions we got was from somebody who's completely new to thinking about greenhouse gases, and the question was, um, what's a supply chain? First, for other people who might be in the audience who are just beginning this process, you know, could you expand on that a little bit? Sure. The supply chain, also known as the value chain, is the, the series of steps required to ultimately provide value to the end consumer. So whether that value is provided through a, a good or a service, there's a series of steps required. Um, for example, uh, a company has to mine materials out of the ground and smelt those into a certain metal. That metal needs to be processed by yet another company. Then another company comes in to transport that material to a factory where the final product shape is, uh, is created. Then another company comes in to ship that finished product to a store, and then that store sells it to the consumer. This whole series is considered the supply chain. OK, we have lots of good questions coming in. Um, just at the beginning, I will mention that if there are any, there are a lot of you in attendance today, so if there are some that we don't get to, uh, we'll follow up with you uh, afterwards, probably by email. All right. Um, all right, so we have a question. How are carbon credits verified in the U.S.? So since the U.S. isn't a signatory to the Kyoto Protocol at the present time, um, a lot of the emissions uh, credits or carbon offsets that are generated in the U.S. are done through voluntary programs. And what's required there is that a company uh, that's doing a emissions reduction project, whether it's capturing landfill methane gas and flaring it, or reducing their own emissions through energy efficiency, they have to use a document called a methodology, which is a, a more specific form of a protocol to calculate their emissions reduction. They can do this with the help of a consultant, or they can do this internally. Then a third party needs to come in to verify, and there's many third parties out there that do this, this verification service, um, they basically need to verify that those calculations were done correctly and that the emissions reduction estimations were conservative um, to ensure that, that the emissions reduction is not overestimated and that the company isn't getting more carbon credits than it deserves. Then finally, a broker might come in and purchase those carbon credits uh, and serve as an intermediary uh, between the seller and the final purchaser. Uh, 